Hi, my name is Brent Vaughan from Multiel Central, and today we uh, are going to test sail the new Seawind uh, 1190 Sport. It's the first in the country, and uh, we're really excited to get out on the water. It's a uh, hybrid between some of the thinking at Corsair Marine with the Trimaran performance uh, uh, sailing boats and the creature comforts and cruising and safety aspects that Seawind are famous for. So, uh, let's go down, take a look, and we'll take you through all the, uh, all the new features. The 1190 Sport uh, is based on the Seawind 1160 hull shape. It's been extended, uh, so it's now 39 feet. And one of the big features is this new transom design down here. And you can see straight off, uh, there's a retractable rudder. So if we stand on here, you can raise these and completely remove them, store them up on the boat. Uh, so it keeps your draft very low or you can completely put them down in place and you've got a nice uh, high aspect rudder there that uh, really nice and easy to trim during uh, I guess high performance mode when the boat's moving quite fast and uh, really light on your fingertips. We've got a nice footstep here uh, so they've extended the waterline length out a little bit uh, which also doubles as a, a nice boarding platform. And you've got quite a high side here. Uh, it gives you a bit of weather protection if you've got uh, a following sea. The profile of the boat has changed somewhat as a result. It's actually a really pretty design. The, uh, the lines of the boat have sort of been stretched out and they've redesigned uh, the window shape. And we've got this lovely carbon targa on here now, which is just the finishing touch. Um, which has got some really nice technical enhancements on as well. So uh, we'll take a closer look at that in a minute. Uh, we've opted to put a, a little tacker cat on here just to keep the weight down on the, uh, on the transom, but you can opt to have any normal rib um, if, if you choose, but uh, seeing the boat is lighter than normal, um, it'd be a shame to load it up too much and kill that additional performance that you've got. Some of the features you notice from, uh, from the side, apart from the, the new profile of the windows and the new really nice sort of profile here of the outer hull, uh, you've got some synthetic safety lines. So just some uh, incremental steps to keeping the weight down. And we also have synthetic uh, <coughs> stays here. So Dyneema with the Caligo uh, adjustment lines there still an alloy rig but the rig itself is quite a bit taller so it's got uh, two spreaders and it's in actually another section on top there so a larger mainsail larger jib larger screecher larger spinnaker all the sails are that bit bigger to give it a bit of extra performance now you'll notice here this is where the the dagger boards actually retract into so uh, they don't come out of the, the top of the hull. Uh, they're completely enclosed inside the, the casing. Further up on the forward deck, we have a, a large carbon bowsprit, and that's where we run uh, either a screecher or a spinnaker. And uh, that extends a fair way forward. You can also run an overlapping genoa, and that genoa would sheet back to these cars with the adjustable track here along the side of the coach roof and you can put tweakers off the boom or over the coach roof to bring the slot in a little bit if you want to get a little bit more hyper pointing performance out of the boat. As far as the layout goes and internally speaking it's quite similar to a Seawind 1160 light. Uh, they've sort of tweaked some of the internals so you've got these nice sort of racy carbon uh, finishing touches and quite a, a clean, fresh upholstery finish on them. Um, and you've got obviously a choice of different colors, but uh, I think it looks really smart. Um, and externally here, it's essentially like a, a Seawind 1160. So you've got you know, the big target seats, the, the barbecue in the middle, the twin helms, and they've upgraded the helm wheels to these nice racing uh, composite wheels. Uh, this is an option to put the seat here, but I think it's a good one to have. Um, of course, you've got the, the Seawind sort of uh, 
helm arrangement, you're all on one level. You can walk between helms, got lots of visibility here, and adjust most of your lines from either side. Um, some of the things they have done uh, differently is to run halyards for spinnakers, screechers, uh, most of the halyards forward to the rig. So the idea being that if you're in a race, uh, you can have crew up there hauling and, uh, and dropping extra sails. Uh, and you can run lots of those control mechanisms up there. The owner of this boat expects to be operating the boat himself a lot of the time. So we're still running the main halyard and main sheet back here for him as a, as a sort of option for him uh, with the electric winch, which really makes the boat still a one person boat to operate. And raising and lowering the, uh, the dagger boards is, is just as simple as letting these lines go. So that's pulling it down in place. So that's dagger board all the way down and then dagger board all the way up is up. And we've got a little marker here to show us roughly where it is. So because the boards, they're not uh, weighted, they typically float. So they help you pull it up and you just need to pull it a little to uh, get it down in place. And all, of course, you've still got the, uh, the main trifold door system that the sea winds are, are famous for to open up this big space. The, uh, the little windows either side here, um, they now stow in this neat locker. So they're tidy and out of the way and not taking up storage down below. Um, but inside, uh, you know, people ask, you know, if you go to the dagger boards, how is it going to affect the internals of the boat? And, and the answer is very little. So the galley arrangement is very open. Um, lots of uh, open space here, very social, easy to pass up food and plates and get it all down out of the way. Um, uh, this is the dagger board case. So it actually doesn't impede that much on the galley at all. Uh, the stove shifted back a little bit and there would normally be on the sea winds a uh, like a galley stowage uh, cupboard there. Uh, but you've got quite a little bit of uh, quite a bit of storage just behind the dagger board case here that uh, you can put some extra storage in there. So um, you don't really lose that much as far as the uh, as the galley goes. You've still got your two double uh, freezers here and your upright fridge. So again, this is the, uh, the dagger board case um, and it really has very little effects on this side. You can still see you've got full uh, walkway through the companionway here. Uh, you've lost a little bit of storage here, but you've gained a little bit oh, through this side behind the case. Uh, you've got a nice simple desk with an office seat, a nice carbon touch to it. And then all the normal storage, you know, you've got a huge, huge amount of storage in the side here. We've got a cushion that goes on the, um, the main uh, dining table in the saloon. So you can convert that into a bed. And up forward here, a uh, nice big uh, queen island bed that uh, is typical on the, the sea winds. Sea wind can really take advantage of their hull shape because the main beds are up on the, the bridge deck. So you, you've actually naturally got quite a, a streamlined hull shape. Uh, and that's why if you take a bit of weight out of it, like they have on this, and add a bit of horsepower through the sails, all of a sudden you can really get the boat moving. And, and I guess what inspired the 1190 Sport was that we were seeing a number of 1160 owners enhancing their boats through extensions and sail upgrades that you could see this, you know, there is room for a boat like this in the market. You know, the boat as a whole probably uh, really suits people who still want to go cruising. Like you can see, it's got all the cruising amenities and accommodation you'd expect on a, on a nice cruising cat. But if you plan to do a bit of social racing, um, Hamilton Island Race Week, Brisbane to Gladstone, or around the boys, uh, Twilight Racing, this is sort of the perfect combination. One of the first changes was, um, that, I mean, the sea winds have always had a uh, traveler system. Uh, with a, a block and tackle purchase arrangement to pull the traveller back and forth through this endless line system. They usually have a uh, little side mounted uh, 
endless winch there, but they've put this full-sized Lumar winch so you can really load the thing up, which you know we'll notice out there today in a bit of breeze that uh, even when you know working to windward, you know if you've come off a reach or whatever, and you've got the main powered up, you can put quite a bit of load on that. It's pretty unique, and uh, you know you, you're getting all the experience of both you know 35 years of sea wind building cruising cats and 30 something years of course they're building high performance uh, trimarans and this is where you sort of got that crossroads between where you, you're sharing ideas in the same shed so it's really interesting to see sort of the new direction coming out of sea wind and not only are the 1190 sport but also the big uh, 1600 sea wind that's been recently uh, launched and that's got similar systems you know with its daggerboard systems and its rudders as well so they're all retractable um, so it's uh, yeah it's an exciting boat a lot of fun to sail